Hello friends, welcome to Intellect Medigold, where learning is made easy. On this channel, we try to make medical topics easy for you with the help of some mnemonics and animations so that it stays in your mind for a longer period of time. As you all know that a lot of time and effort goes into making each one of these videos, for which I have to take time out of my busy clinical schedule, my patients and also from my family. So if you want to thank me, click on my Patreon link below, sign up and you can donate to Intellect Medicos. I would really appreciate. So let's get started. In today's video, we will discuss about GERD, that is gastroesophageal reflux disease or more commonly called as heartburn disease. First, we'll discuss about the pathophysiology. So when we eat food, it goes from esophagus to stomach. At the junction of esophagus and stomach, there lies a valve which is called as lower esophageal sphincter which relaxes when food goes from esophagus to stomach and then closes. But if this sphincter gets disrupted or is relaxed, acid goes from stomach to esophagus causing acid reflux which is responsible for GERD. Symptoms of GERD can be categorized into esophageal or extraesophageal symptoms. Most common symptom is heartburn or they could be regurgitation, belching, dysphagia that is difficulty in swallowing or odynophagia which is pain while swallowing. In the extra esophageal uh, symptoms, they could be cough, wheezing, hoarseness, sore throat, epigastric pain or non-cardiac chest pain. Now coming on to the factors which can aggravate GERD, the most important is the diet. So intake of caffeine, fatty or spicy food, chocolates, alcohol or smoking can aggravate GERD. These all causes relaxation of LES that is lower esophageal sphincter which is responsible for GERD. So you should avoid all these things if you have the symptoms. Now the next factor can be obesity which contribute for GERD. Third is hiatus hernia. It is outpouching of proximal part of the stomach into the mediastinum that is above diaphragm. Pregnancy. This is because high progesterone causes LES lower esophageal sphincter relaxation and there are many other causes. Now coming on to the diagnostic test. First is barium swallow test. It is useful first diagnostic test for the patient with dysphagia. Patient is asked to drink a liquid containing barium sulfate and x-ray pictures are taken immediately after drinking. It can tell about stricture, any mass or hiatal hernia. Next test is endoscopy. A scope or a tube having a light source and a camera is introduced from mouth and advanced further to see any kind of pathology in the esophagus or LES segment or stomach or duodenum. Endoscopy is done in patients with alarming signs or symptoms, in those who fail a medication trial, in those who require a long-term treatment and for the detection of Barrett's esophagus which we'll discuss in the later part of this video. The point to be noted is absence of endoscopic features does not exclude a GERD diagnosis. Now the next test is 24 hour pH monitoring. Accepted standard for establishing or excluding presence of GERD for those patients who do not have mucosal changes. A transnasal catheter or a wireless capsule shaped device is inserted and it measures the amount of reflux both acidic as well as non-acidic in your esophagus during a 24 hour period and assesses whether your symptoms are correlated with reflux or not. The next test is esophageal manometry. It has a limited role in GERD. It is assesses LES pressure, location and relaxation. It also assesses placement of 24 hour pH catheter. Now the next topic is treatment. The most important in treatment is lifestyle modification. So weight reduction to be done if overweight, avoid clothing that is tight around the waist, modify diet in which eat 
more frequently but having a smaller meals try to avoid fatty or fried food peppermint chocolate alcohol carbonated beverages coffee and tea onion garlic and also stop smoking elevate head of bed 4 to 6 inches and try to avoid eating within 2 to 3 hours of bedtime in medical management anti acid are first to be used which neutralizes hydrochloric acid present, present in the stomach. It is quick method but very short lived relief. Second is histamine or H2 receptor antagonist. Most commonly used H2 antagonist is ranitidine. But recently on September 13, 2019, FDA reported that some ranitidine medicines has been found to have NDMA impurity which are classified as probable human carcinogen. Third is prokinetic drugs which promote gastric emptying and reduces risk of gastric acid reflux. The fourth and most important treatment is PPIs that is proton pump inhibitors. They have a better control of symptoms, better remission rates and faster healing of erosive esophagitis in comparison to H2 receptor antagonist. Now coming on to the surgical treatment. It is done whenever there is failed medical management, whenever there is a patient's preference, GERD complications, medical complications attributable to a large height and hernia, or there are atypical symptoms with reflux documented on 24-hour pH monitoring. The most commonly employed surgical approach is referred as Nissen's fundoplication. In this procedure, surgeon wraps the top of the stomach around the lower esophagus. This reinforces the lower esophageal sphincter, making it less likely that acid will back up in the esophagus. The other surgical procedure is sleeve gastrectomy. Now coming on to the last topic of this video, complications of GERD. First is erosive esophagitis. It refers to presence of inflammatory cells within the esophageal mucosa. Second is esophageal stricture. It is a narrowed segment of esophagus resulting from thickening of esophageal wall. Mild degrees of narrowing may not cause any symptoms. When the narrowing becomes more severe, the patient may experience dysphagia that is difficulty swallowing. Third is Barrett's esophagus. In this, a healthy esophageal epithelium is replaced with a metaplastic columnar epithelium, which occurs due to a prolonged exposure of esophagus to the acid reflux of gastroesophageal reflux disease. It is found to be associated with adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So that was all about GERD. If you found this video helpful, do like and share this video and do not forget to subscribe our channel to get the updates about my latest videos. Thank you guys. Best of luck.